Hello, my friends. This is Mr. Folly, and I'm going to rush it today, which maybe you'll like, so maybe you won't. But welcome to uh, the almost last um, Equilibrium podcast. So we're going to start off with KSP. And what's nice about all of these things is all of these are the same thing. So KSP is just like any other K. Products over reactants raise the coefficient. Um, but it is a solution forming a precipitate, or really it's the dissolving equation, okay? So dissolving equations are written to write KSP. So we have a solid that turns into ions, okay? So my example, I have aluminum hydroxide that turns into ions. Notice how I have to balance it, right? There's my dissolving equation for ALOH3. Um, notice these do matter, and you have to know the charges and your ions. Problem types for molar solubility. Um, so we're going to find the molar solubility given, sorry, KSP. So what you do is you look at your molar solubility, and what, what molar solubility is, is it's the negative X in an ice diagram, and it's the number of moles per one liter that can dissolve. Insoluble salts have small KSPs and small molar solubility. What does small mean? Um, e to the negative 4 through E to the negative 99, all right? So that's small, okay? Um, soluble salts have big KSPs. If you're soluble, KSP is something like 1 to E, well, just 1. 1 is a big number, right? KSP equals 1, right? So we're going to find the molar solubility of lead chromate if the KSP is this. So notice this is a slightly soluble salt. So E is negative 14. Um, it's small. Right. We're going to do an ice diagram and solve for X. We've done that before. X is molar solubility. And I want to remind you that we are fine and dandy to use solids. We use some and we use, we, I don't care. Why? They're not in the equilibrium expression. All right. So again, this problem, find the molar solubility of lead chromate if the KSP is 2E negative 14. This is what I have to write. First thing I do is write my dissolving equation. I'm going to do an ice diagram. Okay, now it doesn't tell me anything. It just says the solubility of the KSP is 2E negative 14. So what happens? I put some in. Yeah, I put some in. And this is the initial part. So before, before anything dissolves, okay? Now it's going to start dissolving. How much dissolves? X. How much, how much forms? X. How much forms? 2X. Okay? In the end, we don't care. By the way, we will always have some. And then um, we're going to get X and 2X, okay? We're going to write our KSP expression. I feel very bad. I had the worst time trying to get rid of these parentheses. So there we go. I've gotten rid of them now. Um, so KSP is products over reactants. Now notice it's a solid, so it's just your products, okay? So it told us before this number, 2E14, was given 2E14. And then my reactants, lead and chromate. And then, oops, I forgot my calculator, so I'm stuck with this. So what I get then is 4x cubed equals 2e negative 14. So your pod quiz question is going to be, what's that answer? Oh, solve for x, yeah. Okay. All right, so now sometimes you don't need to show work. Whoa, that was weird. Sometimes you don't need to show work. So these are shortcuts for multiple choice. So what they'll do is, um, if I have something that turns into x positive and plus y negative, that's going to be just root of KSP. And if I have something that is uh, 2x positive plus y negative 2, that's going to be, it's going to be 4x cubed is what KSP is going to equal. So you do this. So you can kind of cheat once you've seen enough of them. And we're going to do a bunch of these where you'll see enough of them. You can see, see the patterns. Where you're going to get a 4x cubed or you're going to get a 27x to the fourth. And then um, it helps you do it quicker when they don't give you a calculator to estimate. So root math for k's. So if I have blah e negative 16, so I don't really care what this number is. But I have e negative 16 and I have to do the fourth root. I'm going to divide by 4. So whatever the root is, you divide by the root. So if you have to do a fifth root, 
you divide by the divide the I'm gonna, I suppose I should put that in there. Divide the e by the root. And this isn't math you've never seen before, but it's good to see again because it's really forgettable. Um, problem type, find K given molar solubility. So this time I'm going to give you molar solubility. It is important to know that molar solubility is minus X. It is a positive number, but it's going to be the minus X when it dissolves. We do use some for solids and I don't care for solids. So some, I don't care. Um, again, before it dissolves, I've got some solid, nothing, nothing, minus X. This will always be minus one X. Just note that will always be one. And then this is based upon what the balanced equation tells us. Okay. So now we're going to solve for KSP. Um, so we were told that the molar solubility is this. So this equals X. So this is X squared Y. So what I did was this is 2X and this is X. So I just substituted my X in for molar solubility. Okay. Be sure to double your X because I have a 2X here. Okay. And then do that math again. I'm calculator list, so that's kind of bad. But I could estimate it. I'll use my estimating skills. Uh, e to the uh, roughly e to the negative 21 or so. Okay. Dissolving with common ions. If ions you are making um, are already in solution. So do you see how I'm making ions? I'm making x plus 1. I'm making y minus 2. I'm making lead plus 4. I'm making chromate. Oh, God. Um, there is, in solution, less will dissolve. This follows Le Chatelier's principle, um, just for the shifting. Extra products will collide more. Yeah, 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 I get the collision parts, right? Common ions reduce solubility. You need to be comfortable with that. Common ions do not change K. It's not temperature. Spectator ions have no effect. That's true always. Ions that react with ions are with the ions produced. So if I have something that will react, um, it is it's assumed to remove them until it runs out. All right, example, um, like the one from way above. So that means I'm using this lead chromate again that we used before, and I'm using its 2E negative 14. But in this case, we're gonna find the molar solubility of lead, lead 4 chromate when I'm in a 0.015 solution of lead 4 nitrate. Do you see how this is a source of lead 4? And nitrate, we, we've been ignoring nitrate for months now, okay? It's the exact same thing, only initially, we have some initial, yay, 0.015. Again, minus X, that's my new molar solubility. X is how much forms, and 2X based on coefficients. Write my K expression, lead chromate squared, substitute, I was given K, E end. And there's your answer to your pod quiz question. Uh, no calculators allowed tomorrow in the pod quiz, by the way, so make sure you write it in. Which solution will AGCL be most soluble in? NaOH, KCL, AgNO3. So when I'm doing this, I originally get rid of the ones I know I can always get rid of. Attention, everyone. Attention, the everyone. The social action project is canceled oh, for no. tonight. Again, the social action project is canceled for tonight. That's a bummer. It's nice and snowy. I hate when they cancel stuff. It's probably what people have been looking forward to all day. All right, so AGCL equals Ag positive plus Cl negative. This is my dissolving equation. OH negative will react with this and remove it. That's why it's my answer. B is incorrect um, because CL will react with it and remove it as well. Okay. Um, and I will shift the equilibrium. Oh, mm, 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 mm. oh, I did that wrong. Shoot. When I have CL, CL doesn't react with AG. So I'm giving a source of CL. I'm increasing CL, right? So if I'm increasing CL, it's going to shift it to the left. My bad. Um, C is incorrect. Nitrate never reacts. AG is a common ion, so it will shift it to the left. So when you create a common ion, it will shift away. All right. Q and K, which is mostly precipitation. Q and K are both products over reactants. When Q is bigger than K, the reaction shifts to the left-hand side. That means it's a precipitate. So here's an example problem. I mix 20 milliliters of this. I hope you see this as only hydroxide. And 20 milliliters of this, I hope you see this as only calcium. All right, common ions, or the uh, spectator ions all the time. Does it precipitate form? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for Q and compare it to K. Note, when you mix solutions, you dilute them. So you either use M1V1 or, because my volumes are the same, I'm doubling the volume so it's cut in half. 
um, Q is products over reactants. So calcium plus two and hydroxide ions squared. And then I do the math. So this is my Q. This is smaller than 8E negative six. So no precipitate forms. Ah, okay. pH and solubility. pH is a measure of H positive or H3O positive. Lower pH means more acidic and more H positive. Same as a common ion. Same as common ion. POH is a measure of OH negative. Low pH means high OH negative concentration. High pH means high OH concentration. pH less than seven is acidic. pH one seven is basic. And we kind of sort of did that up here. Um, instead of talking about um, an AOH, I could have said, what would it be more soluble in? Instead of this, I could have said a basic solution. Okay. And that would have reacted with it more. Okay. That's it. I hope I'm out of here in a reasonable amount of time. Oh, look at that. Under, under 12. Toodles.